Okay, here are solutions to homework set number 7 for ECE 463 Modern Control, Servo Compensators. Now here the goal is to come up with a way to track a constant set point or sinusoidal set point in spite of disturbances. So the first problem looks at, here's the dynamics for the ball and beam system we looked at for the last couple weeks. Uh, use the feedback control law that we came up with homework 6 using full state feedback when the mass is 3 kilograms and when the mass is 3.5 kilograms. So what we'll do is go into MATLAB. I uh, call this guy beam zero. Here's the feedback control law we used in homework set number six, full state feedback with KR. Under the dynamics, I've got the nominal mass, three kilograms, and take the step response run this puppy. Okay. Take the step response. I'm telling it to go to plus one. And for the nominal system, it does it. It's got 10% overshoot because I designed for 10% overshoot in homework six, set six. Tell it to go to minus one. And it goes over to minus one. So everything's nice and peachy. That's when I have the nominal mass. Let's change it so that the mass is now 3.5 kilograms. See what happens. In this case, I have extra mass on the ball that causes it to miss my target. Actually, by a lot, it goes off to infinity. Okay, let's go the other way around. Let's make this 2.5 kilograms a little bit lighter. Just shows off a little bit better. A little bit lighter, so there's not as much torque as I expected. I designed it to go to one meter, and it's missing the target. What happens is if I have a constant disturbance, I miss the constant my target by a constant. So that's the problem with the feedback control law we used last week. Um, I want to come up with a servo compensator so that I track a constant set point in spite of a disturbance. So to do that, I'm going to add a servo compensator. What that does is at steady state, the output is zero, the derivatives are zero. Well, the output is a constant. The derivative of a constant is zero. If this is zero, then y minus r must be zero, y equals r. I'm forcing y to track a constant set point. If there's a disturbance into the system, this integrates and figures out what I need to cancel the disturbance so that at steady state, the input to the integrator is zero. It's got to be zero because if it's not, if it's positive, I'm integrating up. If it's negative, I'm integrating down. I'm not at steady state. So to do that, I first form the augmented system this is the open loop augmented system. Here's the closed loop augmented system. Find kx and kz using pull placement. I'll just look at this. That's my 5 by 5 A matrix. Here's my 5 by 1 B matrix. Place five poles. So to do that, I form the augmented system. Here's my A matrix. There's my servo compensator right here. Uh, there's A. There's B times C, BZ times C, and my B matrix. Use pull placement to place the poles. I want to put the pole for 12 seconds settling time, 10% overshoot, it's conjugate, and three other poles kind of go out somewhere. I don't really care where they go, as long as they're not dominant. And you get your five feedback gains. The way I set it up, the first four are Kx. The last one is Kz. So if I try it, plug those gains into my simulation, which looks like this. This is beam one. I now added a dummy state, my servo compensator. I've got my feedback gains, kx, the ones I just calculated, kz. My control law now is minus kz times z minus kx times x. Once I know u, plug it into the dynamics to find the acceleration. I now have the servo states. az is zero, bz is one. So you can actually delete that if you want. dz is just the difference between the set point the output and the set point. 
integrate x, integrate z, and repeat. So here's what that looks like. Let's go back to the nominal case, 3 kilograms. Save that. Run the simulation. So my set point is at 1. The servo compensator forces the output to go to the set point when it's a constant set point. Output goes to 1. If I tell it to go to minus 1, I get 10% overshoot, and comes over to minus 1. Again, not a whole lot different than what we did with just full state feedback. The difference is, suppose I have extra mass. This went unstable just using pole placement. With the servo compensator, I've got that integrator. It's constantly figuring out what constant do I need to compensate. You know, am I doing the wrong system? Yeah, I'm doing the wrong system. Never mind. Try that again. Control C. Kick me out. Run the servo compensator system. I was just reminding you what happens when you don't have a servo compensator. Run the servo compensator system, and the integrator is searching. It's trying to figure out what constant do I need to track the set point. It eventually figures it out, and I track my constant set point at plus 1. Tell it to go to minus 1. It figures it out, and I go to minus 1. Change the mass. Let's go to 2.5 and run the correct simulation. If I don't have enough mass, and before it was stopping at about 0.2, now it's going to 1. Tell it to go the other way. That's what a servo compensator does. It allows you to track a constant set point and reject a constant disturbance. Well, let's change the problem. Instead of tracking a constant, suppose I want to track a sine wave. Now let's make this 0.5 radians per second. So it works so well for constant, it doesn't work for sine wave. And the answer is, heck no. Suppose I did want to track a sine wave. What do I have to do? Well, that's the next problem on the homework. So anyway, on the homework, I can check the linear response. That's formed the closed loop A, B, C, A minus B, K. Um, here, everything's all grouped together, so I don't have to split, split up uh, Kx and Kz. It's already there. There's my step response with respect to my set point. Take the step response, and sure enough, it tracks a constant set point. If I change the B matrix to be the input, your disturbance, the output goes to zero, it rejects a constant disturbance. That's what a servo compensator does when you have a pole at s equals zero for the servo. I can track a constant set point and reject a constant disturbance. Now the second one I asked is what happens if I want to track a sinusoidal set point? Well in that case it's almost the same solution except that now I pick a servo compensator that has poles at the frequency of my disturbance, or my set point. If this is at 0.5 radians per second, pick this set to have eigenvalues at plus or minus j.5. So again, I've got the augmented system, same as before, but now this has poles at plus or minus j.5. I now have a sixth order system, four poles for the plant, two for the servo compensator. So I'm going to come up with six feedback gains. The first four kx, the last two are for the servo. In MATLAB, I'll set up the plant. Here's my servo compensator. Any system with poles at plus minus j.5 form the augmented system, which is right there. There's your AZ, the servo compensator. Here's A, that's my plant. That's your BZ times C. The B matrix with respect to the set point, B matrix with, with respect to the disturbance, B matrix with respect to the input. Uh, pole placement. Put the closed loop poles wherever you want. There's my dominant pole. One to four second settling time. 
and put the other pole somewhere. Gives you your six by your six feedback gains. These four are KX, those two are KZ. Check the linear system. Here's my linear system, closed loop A matrix, A minus BK, KX. The B matrix with respect to the set point. If my set point is a sine wave, here I've got to use the step three function because response to a sine wave input is not a built-in function in MATLAB, so I had to build my own. So I just pass the A, B, C, D, time vector, your initial conditions, which are all zeros at this point, and your set point. Uh, that's a six by one matrix of zeros. And here's what you get. Here's the set point. There's the output. Sure enough, I'm tracking a sine wave. If I want to see what happens if I have a disturbance at, six, at 0.5 ratings per second, change the B matrix. This is still a sine wave. And what you get is the output ignores the disturbance. If I try it for the ball and beam system, again with the servo compensator, with a pull at s equals zero, that doesn't do it. If I change it, so I now have a servo compensator with poles at plus or minus 0.5. This is my stabilizing feedback gains, Kx. There's Kz. Um, same, u is minus Kz times z, minus Kx times x, except that's now a two by one vector, one by two vector. Server compensator, there's my two by two A matrix, poles at plus or minus J2. Okay, yada, yada, yada. Let's, let's see that puppy run. I'm trying to track a sine wave at 0.5 ratings per second. It's searching, trying to find it. Let's say there it locked in. With the beam dynamics, well, that's actually with the wrong beam, beam dynamics. If I have the nominal beam dynamics, it should work better because that's what I designed it for. Uh, let's see. The nominal case, there's my sine wave. A little bit squirrely response, but it does lock in. And eventually I am tracking my set point. And not just a sine wave. Change that to a cosine function. And it tracks a cosine as well. As long as it's 0.5 ratings per second, it doesn't care. It'll figure out what it has to be sine and cosine to track. Now, two caveats. This wasn't asked for in the homework, but suppose now this works really well for 0.5 rating per second sine wave. Suppose my input is a constant. What happens? So let's make the zero ratings per second constant. And it is not tracking constant at all well. It's not designed for constant, it's designed for 0.5 ratings per second. Suppose instead it is, let's stop this puppy. Suppose it is 0.7 ratings per second. And it works really well at 0.5 ratings per second. At 0.7 ratings per second, uh, not so good. That's the problem with the servo compensators. If you got the frequency wrong, the compensator is wrong. What I would need to do is redesign my servo compensator so AZ has pulse at plus minus J.7, recalculate KX, KZ, then it would work. But if my set point changes frequency, uh, again, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, plus, this will track a sine wave but not a constant. The other one tracks a constant but not a sine wave. 
uh, something to think about, foreshadowing for the next midterm, suppose I want to track a constant and track a sine wave. But that'll be a different assignment. So that's homework set number eight, somewhere. Number eight for ECE 463, Modern Control.